Hi, I'm really happy to have all of you here today. I'm uh, Kathy Wallace, and I am the Special Projects Coordinator for Billy and Graves, and also a National Administrator for Just Serve. And I love cemeteries too. You wouldn't believe how many people come to us and say, I know it's a little strange, but I actually really love cemeteries. And when we say, yeah, well, we know, because a lot of people think that's top secret, but it's not because lots of people love cemeteries and they are awesome. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now, have a little video to show you about Billy and Graves, give you a little overview and a presentation, and then we'll have time for questions at the end. So Billy and Graves is about finding your story and helping others find theirs. connections. It's about finding your story. There are moments in life you never want to forget and people you always want to remember. Family connections are for here and now and for hereafter. Family is about making those connections last. From the newest baby to the most distant ancestor because their story is your story. Finding those distant ancestors can sometimes be a challenge. You could spend all day searching for your family gravestones, or you could use the Billion Graves app. Every time you take a photo, the gravestone is automatically tagged with GPS coordinates. Simply download the free Billion Graves app, then point and tap. It's that easy. You can take the gravestone photos by yourself, with your family, friends, or organization. When you're finished, tap the upload button, and that's it, you're done. You can choose to transcribe the names and dates yourself, or volunteers will do it for you. The data is then made readily available on Billion Graves' website for millions of families around the globe for generations to come. To find clues to your family story, open Billion Graves Maps and watch the magic happen. Each GPS pin marks a gravestone where a photo has been taken with the Billion Graves app. So you can find your ancestors and your family can find your story. Billion Graves is the world's largest GPS link to cemetery data resource. Because you're not just looking for a gravestone, you're looking for your story. I think that's why a lot of us do genealogy, right? We're looking for our story. If gravestones could talk, they would have a lot of stories to tell. But they can't, so Billy and Graves is the next best thing. As gravestones deteriorate, these stories are quickly fading away. I'm sure we've all seen gravestones like these, covered in lichen, cracked or coated with mold, some are being overgrown with grass or weeds. We need to capture the data that's written on them before it's too late. If you've ever seen a dandelion or a blade of grass poking up through a cement driveway or causing a sidewalk to heave, then you understand the power of tiny plant roots. At this Indiana cemetery, flat grave markers are rapidly disappearing due to overgrowth. The gravestones in this pile were removed from grave sites in Germany. Why? Simply because it was someone else's turn to use the plot of land. Under German law, families may lease grave sites for 15 to 30 years at a cost of up to $5,000. Then, if the family is unable, unwilling, or unavailable to renew the rental agreement for up to $5,000 again, the remains are removed and the grave is relinquished to another family. Shortly before the lease ends, a sticker is placed on the gravestones to remind the family that the time is running out. If no one responds, the remains in the graves are unearthed, buried a little deeper, and then the new grave tenant is placed near the surface. The gravestones with all their precious data are heaped into a pile, a gravestone graveyard, if you will. So what will become of the gravestones in this rubble heap? 
Families are entitled to keep the gravestones, but they weigh hundreds to thousands of pounds. So no one's going to pick them up in the trunk of their car or take them home on the bus. They're usually recycled for sidewalks, patios, stone walls, building foundations, and even for new gravestones. Many nations have turned to reusing burial plots and repurposing gravestones. The headstones in this photo are from a cemetery in Copenhagen, Denmark, and they will be ground up for road resurfacing. To find our family stories, we spend a lot of time searching for vital records and collecting family heirlooms. One of the most important pieces of our ancestors' story is finding a photograph of their gravestone. Some of our ancestors' gravestones are not in jeopardy like those we saw in previous photos, but we may not know where to find them. And that's where Billion Graves comes in. Billion Graves' goal is to preserve cemetery data and make it readily available for genealogical research to honor our ancestors and loved ones. Then, even if a loved one's gravestone is damaged or worn by time, the invaluable information recorded at their final resting place will still be available. Here's a short video that explains a bit more about Billion Graves. Billions of people are having a very difficult time finding their ancestors' grave sites. They first have to know the right cemetery to travel to and then need to find a particular headstone in a large cemetery, which sometimes feels like an impossible task. Billion Graves aims to solve this problem in an unprecedented way. Our free mobile app allows people to take pictures of all the headstones in a cemetery and record GPS locations for those photos. Then the app will automatically upload the photos to the Billion Graves website. Once the photos are on the website, users transcribe them, and then what used to be a seemingly unreachable cemetery has become a treasure trove of family history information that billions of people can easily search through to find their ancestors. If you map out your cemetery and I map out mine, and so on, you'll be able to visit the world's cemeteries from wherever you are. So I'd love to hear in the chat if any of you have used Billion Graves before. If you just put in a yes, that'd be fun to know. You can help others find their ancestors by taking photos of gravestones. To get started, you would just go to billiongraves.com forward slash volunteer. That webpage will guide you through the steps that you need to take. The first step is to download the Billion Graves app to your smartphone. You can find it in the App Store if you have an iOS phone or in the Google Play Store if you have an Android phone. Then set up a free account by adding your email address and a password of your choice. Next, find a nearby cemetery. Click on one of the cemetery pins to open more information and continue to follow the prompts to get to a map of the cemetery. The orange dots on the map indicate where GPS linked photos have already been taken with the Billion Graves app. If there are sections of the cemetery without orange dots, then your service is needed to photograph those gravestones. And when I say the orange dots represent where GPS linked photos have been taken, that's really quite literal. If you tap on any one of those orange dots, you will see an image of that gravestone. Cemeteries are usually divided into sections by roads or walking paths. You can choose a section of the cemetery to take photos. Be sure to select sections without orange dots. Those are the areas that haven't been photographed yet. If there's a section that's partially done or has a few photos here and there, Go ahead and redo everything in that section. Any duplicates will be merged during the transcription process. Once you've downloaded the Billion Graves app to your phone and chosen a cemetery that needs photos, you're ready to head out to the cemetery. Open the Billion Graves app. Near the top of the screen, you'll see a large green button labeled Take Pictures. Tap on the green button. When the next screen on the app opens, it will look similar to the camera on your phone. So let me show you around the various features on this screen. First and most important is the large white button. That is for taking photos of gravestones. It just becomes like a camera on your phone. 
every photo taken with the Billion Graves app is automatically tagged with the GPS coordinates. And when I say automatically tagged, I really mean automatic. All volunteers have to do is tap the white button and the app does all the rest. Then at the cemetery, go to the section you've chosen to photograph. You go up and down the rows, taking pictures of each gravestone until you've completed an entire section or the entire cemetery. Keep moving at a quick pace. If you take one photo every 15 seconds, you will have taken 200 photos in just an hour. If you think about if you're at a party, it wouldn't be hard at all to take one photo every 15 seconds. You just snap, move to the side, take a picture of the next gravestone. These rock up really fast. The moment that you tap the button to take a picture with the Billion Graves app, the GPS longitude and latitude are recorded and that cemetery gravestone is plotted on a map. Now back to the camera screen on the app. See that icon in the corner that looks like a chain? That is for linking photos together. So one of the times you might want to use the linking tool is if you come to a gravestone that has information on more than one side. For example, some headstones have the parents listed on one side and the children listed on the other. The parents side may have the family name or surname on it, but the children's side may not. So to link the data on both sides together, tap on the chain icon in between the two photos. So you take a photo of the side with the parents' names, tap on the chain icon to link to the next photo, and step around to the back side of the gravestone and take a photo of the side with the children's names. And now all that data about the family will stay together. This is also a great method for photographing obelisks. First, stand back to get a view of the entire monument, then move in close, tap the chain icon to link, and then take a photo of the names and dates on the first side of the obelisk. Tap the chain icon again, step around to the second side, take another photo. Continue tapping the chain icon between photos until you've linked all four sides of the obelisk. The linking feature is also useful for family plots. Sometimes there's one large gravestone with a family surname on it, and then there are smaller gravestones around it with individual first names on them. Tap on the chain icon in between each one to link the entire family's data together. Now see that little pencil icon? Most of the time, you don't need to touch it, but there are cases where it can be incredibly useful. It is used to transcribe headstones right at the cemetery while you're still there that are too difficult to read in a photo. So for an example, Anna, who's an avid Billion Graves fan, has a lot of experience taking photos in cemeteries with the Billion Graves app. She shared her tips about how to use that pencil icon. So each summer, Anna takes a cross country trip on an adventure to find gravestones of her kin or her family members in Kentucky and Virginia. And since she's traveled thousands of miles, she wants to be sure that she's gathered as much information at the cemetery as possible. Most of her kin are buried in small family plots in people's backyards. So Anna knocks on the door, she gets permission, and then she takes photos with the Billion Graves app on her smartphone. But many of the gravestones are so old that they're barely legible. And sometimes Anna can feel the letters in her hand to tell what they say. Or other times, if she looks at them at just the right angle, then she can tell what they say. But either way, if she thinks that the transcribers would have a hard time reading the names and dates from a photograph, she taps on the pencil icon. That opens a form. Then she can enter the names and dates right on the app. Just a reminder though, it's not necessary to to use that pencil icon if the gravestone is legible, since the transcribers will be able to read it in your photograph. Here are some photo taking tips for your trips to the cemetery. Maybe you're going to that favorite cemetery you mentioned. If possible, stand to the side to avoid casting a shadow. Casting a shadow makes for some funny looking pictures. But more importantly, it can make the names and the dates difficult for transcribers to read. Hey, nice sandals. <laughs> but no one wants to see them in a gravestone photo. So tuck your toes in. 
Some gravestones may have flowers or other decorations in front of the names and dates. You may need to move them aside for just a moment to take a photo. Of course, treat the items with respect and put them back when you're done. You may want to pack a cemetery bag to keep in your car. I keep one in mine. It makes it really easy to stop off at the cemetery and take photos of a few rows while I'm out running errands. These short outings can very quickly add up to thousands of pictures. So what should you put in your cemetery bag? Well, not every cemetery needs all the items in your bag. There will be some things that'll be particularly useful at each cemetery. A soft bristled brush can be useful in cemeteries that have dried grass on the gravestones. I like to toss in a cleaning rag. Then I can tuck that into one of my pockets to quickly brush up dirt or grass at the gravestone. In a cemetery that's really well kept, a cleaning cloth and my smartphone are really the only items that I use. But an old toothbrush is great if you've run into gravestones where they need to, you need to loosen the moss and the lichen. This is another item that I often can tuck into a pocket when I'm taking photos. It's important to wear comfortable shoes when you're taking photos in the grave cemetery because the ground is often uneven where burials have taken place. Take drinking water for yourself and some water for the gravestones. A little spritz of water on gravestones can make engraved lettering stand out better than when it is dry. An umbrella can be great during a light rain. And it's especially useful if you live in a very sunny area to protect the gravestone from glare as you take a photo. The shadow cast by the umbrella can pre prevent your own reflection from showing up on glossy stones. Use a mirror to reflect light across the difficult to read lettering or shine a flashlight across the stone. And bring a friend. It'll keep you safer and make the trip more fun. Sometimes it can be easy to forget where you left off when you're taking gravestone photos. So you could lay a penny or a pebble on a gravestone to mark your spot at the end of a row for the next time you return. You could even stick a bouquet of artificial flowers in the ground at the end of a row, or use the GPS coordinates on the Billing Graves app to see where you left off. Here's how. In the corner of the screen is a tiny map with a flashing blue dot. The blue dot is your own GPS location. Tap on the map to enlarge it. Here's an example of what it would look like when it's enlarged. As you move about the cemetery, you'll be able to see your position as that flashing blue dot in relation to the gravestones around you and whether or not they have orange dots in them. This will allow you to see exactly where to begin taking photos. When you're finished at the cemetery, upload your pictures. You don't need to do this after each picture. Wait until you're done completely with your outing and you can upload your pictures then right at the cemetery if you have unlimited data on your phone plan or you can wait until you get home and connect to Wi-Fi. To upload, begin by tapping on the X in the corner of your screen. This will cause an orange button to appear that says Upload. Tap on it and the photos will automatically be sent to the Billion Graves database. When you tap on the Upload button, a pop-up will appear with the question, would you like to transcribe your own images? You can answer yes or no. If you tap yes, then you will have 14 days to type the names and dates from your photos before they are released to the public queue. If you tap no, the photos will immediately be released for other volunteers to begin transcribing. So which one should you choose? Should you transcribe your own photos? Well, I'll tell you from my experience what I would choose. There are hundreds of Billing Graves volunteers just waiting to transcribe new photos. If I upload my photos right at the cemetery, hundreds of them, they are often all transcribed before I can make the 10 to 15 minute drive home. So if you live in an area where the GPS linked gravestones are still needed, please just say no and have someone else do the transcribing while you keep taking pictures. 
After you return home, if you've finished photographing the entire cemetery, go to the Vet Cemetery's webpage on the billionggraves.com and click on the green button that says Declare as Done. Who can help with cemetery documentation? Cemetery documentation projects are great for families, youth groups, individuals, couples, church groups, scouting organizations, and family reunions. Anyone old enough to take a photo with a phone is welcome to help. Even little ones can help by brushing off gravestones. Some youth groups make documenting gravestones fun by dividing into teams, and then the team that takes the most photos in a certain amount of time wins. A losing team has to sing them a song or serve them dinner the next week. I'll show you how to find a headstone at a cemetery using the Billion Graves app. As you may know, it can be a challenge to find your ancestor's gravestone in a large cemetery. Imagine you're at a cemetery with 70,000 gravestones. You could spend hours or even all day looking for your ancestor's gravestone. Or you could use the Billion Graves app. From the main screen, tap on Find Headstones. A form will appear. Enter the names or dates relating to the person you're looking for. Here I've entered the name Anna Smith. The next screen will show possible results. Tap on the one that you think best fits the name you're searching for. Then you'll see a photo and information about the gravestone. Tap on the icon labeled Cemetery Map. It's right here. A map of the cemetery will then open with just one pin on it, the one for the person you were looking for. Within moments, you'll be able to drive right to it. One Billion Graves user shared their experience with us saying, last year, I was with a large group of my family members traveling from the east to California. My dad was from Humboldt, California, and he wanted to show us some of his old stomping grounds. I am an avid genealogist, so I wanted to find the grave of my great grandmother as I'd never seen her headstone. I like to do this as it makes me feel closer to those who have passed before. This particular great grandmother died just a few short months before my dad was born. We felt as if a family, that it was important to be connected to her. We got directions to the cemetery and placed the information in our cell phone. Since this was Northern California, we thought that the cemetery would be small and it would be easy to find a headstone. But when we arrived, to our dismay, the cemetery was rather large and several thousand gravestones surrounded us. As I got out my Billion Graves app, I placed the name in the headstone finder. And to my delight, I got a hit. We were able to find my great grandmother's headstone in just a matter of a few minutes. In fact, we walked right up to the stone. Thanks, Billy and Graves. What about photo requests? Well, Billy and Graves does take photo requests. You can make a request or you can fulfill someone else's request. To make a request, just go to the cemetery page on billionggraves.com and enter the name and any other information you may have. To fulfill someone else's photo request, tap on photo request icon from the main screen on the Billion Graves app. A map with orange pins will appear marking the nearby cemeteries that have photo requests. Tap on one of the orange pins. This will lead to information about that particular cemetery. Tap on photo requests to see information about the gravestone being requested. But are photo requests really the best way to finish an entire cemetery? Volunteers who fulfill photo requests often take only a few photos at a time rather than documenting an entire section of the cemetery at once. They come and they go in and out of the cemetery over years. 
Volunteers who are taking just a few photos at a time often do one of three things. One, photograph only their own family members' gravestones. Two, randomly choose gravestones to photograph. Or three, take an image in response to someone's photo request. If there was a map that showed which gravestones had been documented based only on photo requests, the map would look like Swiss cheese. Just as Swiss cheese is full of holes, these cemeteries would have partial coverage, but they would also have holes where people missed taking photos. Here's an example of what a satellite map of the cemetery might look like if the photo taking was done primarily based on photo requests. Taking photos row by row with the Billion Graves app, on the other hand, ensures that the entire cemetery will be finished. On this map, the dots on the left indicate gravestones that have already been photographed with the Billion Graves app. The gravestones on the right still need to be photographed. And by the way, just in case you're wondering, the green dots are gravestones that have not been transcribed yet, and the orange dots represent gravestones that have already been transcribed. When you photograph row by row, you can help a lot more people. So you could spend an hour hunting for a particular gravestone to fulfill a photo request, or you could spend one hour taking photos of about 240 gravestones. And as you gain more experience, you can take up to 400 to 600 photos in an hour, and every one of them will be marked with the GPS location. You can even add a cemetery to the Billing Graves web website and app. Almost every morning, a, a man named Roger stepped out of the back door of his home in rural Tennessee and went for a walk. At one time, the area was farmland, but now it's a subdivision with newer homes. He usually headed for a path that went around a stand of trees bordered by a fence on common ground in the center of the houses. But one day it was so hot that Roger stepped over the fence and walked into the woods seeking shade. As he did, he noticed a gravestone peeking out from underneath the, the overgrowth of ivy. The deeper he went into the woods, the more gravestones he found. Eventually, Roger involved his community in cleaning up the abandoned cemetery. He had heard of the Billion Graves app and he wanted to use it to document the gravestones. But when Roger checked the Billion Graves website, there was no cemetery listed in that location because it was so tree covered that it could not be seen on satellite maps. So Roger had to figure out how to add this newly found cemetery. To add a new cemetery, go back to the main screen of the Billion Graves app on your smartphone and tap on Find Cemeteries. Then click on the three horizontal lines in the corner of the screen. A green button will appear that says add new cemetery. Tap on it. Then if you're already at the cemetery, just tap on the use current location button. The GPS feature on the Billing Graves app will then add the location of the cemetery. But if you're not at the cemetery, you could add it by entering the address. Thanks to Roger and the Billion Graves app, the people who were buried at this previously lost cemetery will never be forgotten again. Another meaningful way to help others find their family story is to transcribe Billion Graves headstone images. After all, someone out there may have been looking for their ancestor for decades, and you could be the one to help find that special person. What is transcription anyway? Well, basically, transcribing is recording the names and the dates from a headstone image that has been taken with the Billing Graves app. Additional information like military ranks, family relationships, and epitaphs are also recorded. Again, if you have the option of either transcribing or taking photos, please take photos. And that said, here are some reasons that you may want to transcribe rather than take photos. If the cemetery is still buried in snow, or if it's dark outside, because yeah, we prefer to be able to see the names and dates. If you're physically unable to walk through a cemetery, 
or if you don't own a smartphone or a GPS enabled device, if you live in an area where all the cemeteries have al already been photographed. So who can transcribe? Anyone who can read and use a keyboard may help with this work. Even children can participate with some careful guidance from an adult. You will need a computer or a tablet to do transcriptions. If you're new to Billion Graves, you'll first need to set up an account with your email address and password. It's free. Then go to billiongraves.com forward slash transcribe. Type the information on the gravestone into the following fields. Given names, that's for the first name, the middle name or initial, the family name, just the last name, the birth and death date with the day, month and year and the age at death. Next, enter the prefix such as Mr., Mrs. or doctor and the suffix such as junior or senior if that information appears on the gravestone. Clicking on the option to choose the religion will open a long list of religious symbols for you to choose from. Select the one that matches the symbol on the gravestone. And finally, add any in information about military service. And you can add other details. The show Hebrew dates option is to be used if you're transcribing a Hebrew headstone, which should only be done if you know the Hebrew language. By the way, did you know that all of Israel's cemeteries have been photographed with the Billion Graves app? They have. The other it's not buried here button is to record those who are listed on the gravestone but are not buried, but are buried in another cemetery. When you click on the advanced mode, you'll be given the option to add maiden names and marriage dates. The blue add person button is to add those who are buried at this site. The epitaph button is for recording words written on the gravestone like rest in peace or gone but not forgotten. And the notes section is for recording additional information you may know about the gravestone. Indexing from handwritten records can be challenging. It can be particularly difficult for youth who have not learned to read cursive writing since it was eliminated from school curriculums in recent years. Transcribing from gravestones is so much easier since the names and dates are usually recorded in print or block letters. You can also volunteer from home by doing second pass transcriptions. What is the second pass? It's basically a second look at records that have already been transcribed by a second pair of eyes, so any errors can be corrected. This will ensure that Billion Graves records are spot on. When a record appears on the second pass, you'll see an image of the gravestone and you'll also see the names, dates, and other information that have already been filled in on the transcription form. The second pass form looks like the usual transcription form, except that you will notice the column of boxes on the right hand side of the information fields. Transcribers compare the names and dates on the form to the information on the gravestone image. Then they correct any mistakes or missing information. So the shadows cast by a nearby tree make this gravestone image a bit difficult to read, but the transcription is looking good. If the recorded information is correct, click on the box to the right of that field and a green check mark will appear. All of the Billion Grapes records are shared with Family Search. Transcribers also have the option of linking images on Billion Graves with existing Family Search records as they work. Sometimes we're asked if Billion Graves is free. And the answer is yes. It's free to research names. It's free to find gravestones that have been photographed by volunteers. It's free to add photos and it's free to see the satellite image maps with GPS markers on them. And that's what we'd like to emphasize, it's free. But some people would like to do even more. So there is also a paid subscription upgrade called Billion Graves Plus that offers some added benefits. 
Here are eight features that are offered through Billy and Graves Plus, and I'll explain a few of them. Family notifications is a feature that allows you to track a particular name. When a gravestone image is added to Billy and Graves database with that name, you will receive an email with a headstone image and a link. This keeps you from having to continually return to the website to see if new information has been added. Billy and Graves family plot feature allows you to see where people with the same family name are buried. Since most people, about 70% of us, are buried in family plots, this can be very useful. Finding one person can mean finding a whole family. But what about the family members who may be buried near your ancestor, but have a different last name? For instance, a married daughter or a grandchild. So once you know where your ancestor's buried, you can use the Billion Graves Plus feature called Nearby Graves to see who is buried in close proximity, even if they have a different last name. This feature may enable you to find missing relatives or relatives you didn't even know about. The Billion Graves Plus Global Family feature searches for your family name all over the world to potentially discover otherwise unknown family members. This can help you to find relatives who may have moved to a neighboring city or county or even across the country. For those of you who are professional genealogists, you'll be happy to know that the Billion Graves methods follow the genealogical proof standard. The genealogical proof standard is a guideline for establishing the reliability of a genealogical conclusion with a reasonable certainty. Billy and Graves provides a verified photo for every headstone record. We're more than just an online memorial. Billy and Graves helps you to find more family members through burial proximity, even if they're buried nearby with a different surname. Billy and Graves provides irrefutable evidence of headstone information and that it was verified in person by a Billy and Graves volunteer. So you won't find others who have just entered some information that they think they remember is correct on our website, it's going to be shown with a gravestone photo. What about gravestone photos taken without the Billion Graves app? Do you have photographs of gravestones that you took with a regular camera before you learned about the Billion Graves app? If so, are you wondering if you can upload them to the Billion Graves database? Yes, you can. Using the Billion Graves app with your smartphone is of course the best way to go when you take gravestone photos at a cemetery because it automatically adds the GPS coordinates and marks the location on a map. But what if you didn't know about the Billion Graves app when you took the trip to your ancestral homelands last year? Or what if you took irreplaceable cemetery photos 15 years ago before the technology for Billy and Graves app was even invented? Or what about other genealogical sources such as death certificates, obituaries, and more? Can you upload those too? Yes, you can. When you add gravestone photos that were taken without the Billy and Graves app, they are called supporting records. Since they lack the GPS coordinates that are automatically added with the Billy and Graves app, they cannot be plotted on cemetery maps, but they're still valuable pieces of information and we would still love to have you add them to the Billion Graves database. Here are some other types of supporting records that can be added to the Billion Graves database. Birth, death and marriage certificates, burial records, cremation records, unmarked grave information, military records, and any other type of record that supports and validates a Billion Graves headstone photo. Some volunteers may need verification for their community service hours. Billion Graves is happy to provide verification whether the service is needed by a student or whether it's court appointed. Volunteers are credited for one hour of service for every 250 gravestone photos taken or 48 records transcribed. 
One of the questions we're often asked is, what about those who have been buried in unmarked graves? How will they be remembered? If you know who is buried in an unmarked grave, write the information on a whiteboard, chalkboard, or if a piece of paper, then take a picture of it with the Billion Graves app. It will automatically be tagged with GPS coordinates, just as if it was a beautiful gravestone. So we invite you to find a cemetery and take photos with the Billion Graves app to find your own family story and to help others find theirs. Your service will bless families around the globe for generations to come. There will be links to more information in the notes below the video. The video has been recorded and you'll have access to that. So feel free to reach out to us if we can be a further help. We would love to hear from you.